Hi, I'm Amy Pack with Homeschool in the Woods, and I'm going to show you how to make a very simple mob cap. If you're studying the American Revolution or the colonial period, this is a great no-sew, very quick way to get a, a colonial girl or pioneer girl even look with just a simple piece of um, cloth and a ribbon. So let's get started. Um, you're going to want to have a circle that's anywhere from 18 to 24 inches depending on your child's head. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go um, 20 inches on this one. And so you want to make sure you've got at least a 20 inch width and length. So then you're going to fold it exactly in half. Get your edges together the best you can. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to fold it again in half. And as you can see, I'm not even working with a very perfect piece, but I know that by the time I get done, I will have 20 inches in a circle. So, all right, I'm going to fold it again. So now you folded it into eighths. All right, now working from the center, Point. We're going to take, because we folded it in half, we need to go with a half measurement, so we're going to do 10, 10 inches. And what you're going to do is you're going to start by making little ticks on the fabric. Now right now I'm using muslin, but you can use a bed sheet, you can use really just about anything, any type of fabric. Um, usually mob caps were white, but I've, I've seen them in other patterned fabrics and stuff like that too. So. The nice thing about white though is it does go with everything, or at least the off-white of muslin. So, all right, once you get across the entire thing with your 10 inch ticks, then you're going to pretty much connect the dots. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get it pretty, pretty close. You're really making an arc here. All right. And then using scissors that will cut through several layers of fabric. Cut your curve. Okay, and when you open that up, you should have a 20 inch circle. All right, now you can go around and create slits around the entire thing. You're gonna go and use a two inch, in about two inches, or you can go back to having it in half and creating your two inches that way. It does not have to be perfect. These things end up very floppy when they're done, so it's not like you have to have a perfect edge. You're gonna go around and make your slits, or your, your pencil marks in every two inches and about the equal distance apart. Like so. What's nice about having something like this is when you want to have dress up, um, you know, this, this type of a hat can be used for a variety of um, looks, whether you're doing, like I said, the pilgrims even, the colonial era, um, pioneers, westward expansion, anything like that. Mob caps were kind of used throughout several years of history. All right, almost done. Now, once you get to this point, you're gonna be snipping these little lines. So, and you're gonna be running ribbon through it. So you wanna make sure that your snip is wide enough for the ribbon to go through. Like so. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Now this pencil lines also don't worry about that. We can make that the inside of the cap. You know, it's really nice to have a dress up box going for the kids because um, it's a great way to live the history that you're learning about. And the more you can collect the um, 
more variety you'll have. There's certain pieces that work really well to uh, just have in general, like a gray sweatsuit would work well if you're going to do a, um, a night in the Middle Ages or long skirts that um, you can find in Goodwill for um, to be a colonial dress. Uh, putting an apron over anything can really kind of bring you back to that era too. In muslin, having muslin on hand, when it's on sale, muslin comes in for a variety of things. You can make capes out of it, all kinds of things. The aprons themselves and stuff too, shawls, all kinds of things. Okay, so now I have created the slits and it's gone through both sides. And now we're gonna take the, um, the circle we've created and we're going to add ribbon to it. And all you're gonna do is weave the ribbon in and out of each slit. Now, a way to make this easier is to take a piece of tape and to create like a needle for it. Take a piece of clear tape, fold it over the end, and you want to create a point on one end. And now it's stiff enough, you can actually do two layers if you need to, but it's stiff enough to kind of make it a little easier to go in and out of the slits. And it's basically in one, up through the next one, in the next one, and up through the next one. So. Okay, so I reached the end and I trimmed the ribbon at the end, but you wanna leave quite a bit left because you still wanna be able to have enough room to tie a bow. So what you're gonna do is you're going to pull the drawstring close, but you're gonna do it over your child's head so that you can actually get the correct measurement. So go this direction. And then tie the bow off according to your child's head size. The way to do this too is to, um, if you wanna, create a much smaller version, you can make one very small and use it over like a bow on the head, a bow, a bun, a bun on the back of the head, a bun in the hair. So, and that was another look. That was a look during that era and it was a look during um, in French fashion at that time as well too, was to have it just over the bun in the back. So, all right, thanks so much for watching. Ignite a love of learning in your child and be sure to do it hands on. For more helpful tips and ideas to encourage you in your homeschool, like this video and subscribe to our channel.